Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. 400 days less the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a decree authorizing Russia's semi-annual spring conscription, which will induct 147,000 Russians between April 1st and July 15th, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to the U.S. Institute for the Study of War, Putin remains unlikely to deploy newly conscripted troops to participate in combat in Ukraine due to concerns of public outcry and for the stability of his regime. Putin did not deploy conscripts from the spring 2022 conscription cycles in response to Ukraine's September 2022 counteroffensive in Kharkiv Oblast, but instead mobilized reservists to stabilize collapsing front lines. The experts believe that the start of the new conscription period, even with a slightly increased number of conscripts, may actually reduce Russia's training capabilities for reservists and other personnel. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine Dmitry Kuleba considers it dangerous to perceive the spring counteroffensive as a decisive moment in the war, reports Interfax Ukraine. In an interview with the Financial Times, Kuleba said that decisive moment narrative is dangerous for Ukraine because if it falters, it will strengthen the position of those in the West who want to push Kyiv to compromise with Moscow. He clarified that all wars are a series of battles and if this offensive is seen as decisive but does not lead to 100% liberation of Ukraine's territory, some people may say that this was the last decisive battle and now Kyiv needs to think about alternative scenarios. According to the Pentagon, a group of 65 Ukrainian soldiers has completed their training with Patriot surface-to-air missile systems in Port Seal, Oklahoma, reports European Pravda. They are on their way to Europe to work together with their fellow soldiers who are currently training there. Another group of around 4,000 Ukrainian soldiers or two brigades is set to complete training with Bradley and Stryker fighting vehicles by the end of this month. The soldiers will then travel back to Ukraine. The Pentagon spokesman added that additional military training exercises are currently underway in Germany. North Macedonia decided to donate 12 Mi-24 Soviet-made attack helicopters to Ukraine, reports Suspilne. The helicopters were purchased from Ukraine in 2001, but their service life ended eight years ago. They are also not used due to lack of spare parts. At the same time, the defense minister said that Ukraine has the ability to put these combat helicopters into operation and the Ukrainian army needs them to conduct various operations and combat missions in modern conditions. Last August, North Macedonia handed over four Su-25 fighter jets to Ukraine that it bought from Kyiv back in 2001. The country also donated Soviet T-72 tanks to Ukraine, which it planned to decommission in the coming years. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family as well as share information on social media. This way more people would learn about the podcast and truth about Russia's invasion. Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the National Security Council in the White House, John Kirby, said that Russia is seeking to obtain munitions from North Korea, possibly offering food in return, reports European Pravda. According to Kirby, Russia is seeking more ammunition to intensify its military operations in Ukraine. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate refused to leave the grounds of the Kyupachersk Lavra Monastery, reports Ukrainform. The Kyupachersk Lavra is one of the oldest and most important Orthodox monasteries in Ukraine and the entire Eastern Europe, founded in 1051. Officially, it belongs to the state, but for many years, large parts of the complex were used by the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, which is part of the Russian Church. The clergy was supposed to leave the Kyupachersk Lavra on 30th of March, as their lease agreement had been terminated. At the same time, the church filed a lawsuit to oppose this decision, but the court dismissed it. The Commission for the Acceptance and Transfer of State Property of Kyupachersk Lavra was not allowed in the monastery yesterday. Minister of Culture and Information Policy Alexander Tkachenko informed that in response a complaint was filed with the police on the fact of obstructing the work of the commission. According to him, on March 31st, the commission will continue its work in any case. 
Russian security services detained Ivan Gershkovich, a Wall Street Journal reporter in Yekaterinburg, and the criminal case had been opened against him for espionage, reports Radio Liberty. Gershkovich had traveled there to write about the attitude of Russians to the war and the recruitment of residents to the Wagner Group private military company. Gershkovich has lived in Moscow for about six years, covering events in Russia and Ukraine for the Wall Street Journal. Later, Dmitry Peskov, press secretary of the Russian president, said that the journalist was caught red-handed, reports Ukrainska Pravda. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken condemned the arrest and reminded that all Americans in Russia should leave as soon as possible. The state secretary noted that the department is in contact with the editors of the Wall Street Journal and is also making efforts to provide consular and other support to the detained journalist. The White House stated that there is no reason to believe that the accusations of espionage are true, reports Ukraine Forum. The Highlights from Ukraine podcast is a commercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.